Welcome everybody to the Berg, Berg, Berg Breakdown. We are so excited that you're tuning in. We've got a special person in the fam, Mr. Eric Boyd, on the breakdown today. Eric, welcome. Thank you. So Glad excited you're that you're here. Yeah. Uh, what we like to do in the Berg Breakdown is really quick break down this past Sunday's message and the scripture that we went through to make it even more simple and practical to our lives because we want to not just read the word, we want to live the word. And this past Sunday, we capped off kind of a series, kind of a flow of going through a school, back-to-school basics Bible stories, if you will, of the ones you've probably heard as kids, but we believe that every time you read something in the Word of God, you can learn something new. So we were kind of going back to the basics, and we ended with David versus Goliath. If you don't know the story, I'm going to tell you the story really quick. So there is a Philistine who is a giant, and his name is Goliath. Some people would say estimated around nine foot, nine foot six. Um, He's a big dude. And uh, he was coming against God's army and the Israelites, and uh, they weren't really willing to do anything about it because of the fear that they had of Goliath. And David shows up on the scene, basically says, I've killed lions and bears before, and I can take care of this Philistine because of who my God is. He shows up, Saul the king finally says, okay, you can fight him cool, but here's all of my armor. He tries out his armor, says, this isn't for me. This isn't what I was equipped to fight with. I'm just going to use what I have. He goes down to the river, grabs five stones um, as ammunition for his slingshot and uh, his staff, and he goes out to face Goliath, ends up defeating Goliath. Scripture says that the Lord will conquer you, and then I will kill you, is what David says. Probably my favorite line of that whole passage. Um, But he ends up defeating Goliath. But there's a couple things that I want to pull from this story um, that we can kind of apply to our life and and help us be more like Christ. And the first thing is this perspective that David walks in on the scene with the Israelites, Eric, and they're all afraid of Goliath, but David doesn't have fear because of the fights that he's already fought on his own. He says, I've taken care of the lions and the bears, oh my, and all all these battles protecting my sheep. And he's built in the repetition, so when Goliath came, he was able to stand in front of Goliath without fear. And I just want you to speak in a little bit about building those spiritual muscles, putting in the repetition, how important it is in that intimate relationship one-on-one, so that when those Goliaths or mountains or whatever word you want to use shows up, we're prepared. Yeah. I love... I love this series. I love the idea of breathing new life into these stories that were, you know, often used as Sunday school stories. Yeah. But there's so much depth to them, um, and there's no limit to that. It just, every time you go back to them, you see something new. Right. And even as you were breathing new life into it, you know, I was sitting there listening, and God was showing me even, you know, more depth to some Mm. of the things that you were hitting on. Yeah. And so as I was sitting there, I was thinking about how David was, um, you know, he was given a job by his father to take care of these sheep. And so, you know, that's it, right? Yeah, that's right. what he had to do. He was yeah. out by himself. He mm-hmm. spent a lot of time by himself. All he knew was he did not want to disappoint his dad, mm. right? That I'm going to do whatever it takes to take care. Yeah. Of, he's trusted me with these sheep. Yeah. They have some value. I mean, at that time, it was, you know, a culture where your sheep were your wealth. Yeah. You know? And so he's like, this is the family business. Right. So I'm going to I'm gonna do my part. And so if a bear comes up, I'm not going to go back to dad and say, yeah. hey, a, a bear got your sheep. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever I have to do to keep that bear away. Yeah. And so I think that he spent so much time alone by himself, where all he had was the Lord to lean on for help in those kind of yeah. things. And so as he developed that, when those things came up, he didn't have time to think about it. Mm. All he was like, I know I got to, I can't disappoint my dad. Yeah. You know? I've got to, I've got to stand between yeah. this bear that's and so this good. sheep and bring it home. And so that is, I like, I felt like that's what the Lord was saying. It was like, that's how he got, mm. he got the um, experience because he had to. It was just him and the Lord. Yeah. And so because every time you go through something like that, there's nobody else around watching. Yeah. Like and nobody's going to really know what you were feeling in that moment. Right. And so those are the things where we grow with the Lord. That's it's good. about what people don't see. Yeah. And it's not about what you do. It's about 
what experiences do you have? And then like, are you leaning on the Lord? Because if, when it's just you and the Lord, there's, um, you know, that's a place where, you know, there's such growth because you're so dependent on the Lord. Yeah. That's so good. And I feel like that's what David was, was the way that he prepared for that moment. The reason that he could come Mm. with that kind of boldness and determination and really lack of fear. Yeah. It's like he had defeated a bear. He had defeated a lion and it was just him. And at the end of the day, those sheep were his father's, you know, um, you know, important to his father. Mm -hmm. So now he's, he's in a, in a place where the Israelites he knows that those are important mm-hmm. to God. Those yeah, are God's that's children. His people, yeah. Those are God's sheep. I mean, all throughout um, Scripture, we look, we are compared to sheep, right? That's our relationship yeah. with the Father. And so I think that he knew, well, look, you know, I was able to protect these sheep right. that belong to my dad. How much more does God care about these Israelites? Yeah, these that's are good. His, these are his flock. That's so good. He's not going to let this happen. That's right. So that's why he was like, hey... My father's gonna take you down. Yeah, that's then so good. Then I'll cut your head off. <laughs> Such a good thought, right? And and it was his that intimate relationship and dedication to doing what his father asked him to do is what built those muscles. And then the next part of the passage, we can end with this. Saul tries to give David his own armor, and David tries it out, and it doesn't really fit. This isn't what I am used to fighting with. Um, I'm just gonna use what I have. How important is it for us to understand our own giftings, our own weapons, armor, if you will? I mean, we all have the armor of God, but God has equipped you with specific gift sets to reach the people around you. Um, How important is it for us to remember to not live in that world of comparison or jealousy, but to walk in what God has given us to fight the daily battle with? I I think it's the only way that we're going to... you know, understand the relationship that God wants to have with us. We're yeah. uniquely created. Yeah. We're, we're all created in his image, but he's created us all uniquely. Right. And he wants us to come to him to, to know what, you know, what makes us, you know, yeah. who we are. Yeah. What, what did, what did he create us for? Yeah. Right. And you're not going to ever find that in a book that somebody else wrote. Right. You know, you're not going to find that in a formula that worked for somebody else. Mm. Um, you've got to have a relationship with the Lord where you can hear from him. Yeah. And you can see what he's, like, you know, birthed in you uniquely. Like, what are your passions? What are you good at? What feels what feels authentic to you? Like, if you're not... If you're not sharing God's love, the you know, in a way that's unique to you, yeah. with somebody, it's right. gonna sound it's manufactured. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna sound like something they've heard before. Right. But if it's if it's truly what you feel, people pick up on that's good. authenticity. That's good. And we can't fake that. That's right. And you can't shortcut it. You can't learn it. You can't go to a college and learn it. You can't. You know, it only comes from spending time with the Lord and yeah. learning to hear His voice and learning to um, understand what His his unique purposes for your life. Yeah, that's so good. So we would challenge you as you are moving forward to continue to set new routines and step into new depths of spending time with the Lord because you will learn more about who he has called you and equipped you to be for the same mission as other people, but maybe some different tools. And it will also simultaneously be building those spiritual muscles so that when you're called to face a mountain or a Goliath for your family, um, for your kids, for your congregation, for whoever it is, you'll be ready because you know who God is and you know who he's called you to be. We love you guys so much. Thank you for joining us on the Berg Breakdown. Eric, thank you for joining us. Uh, We hope to see you soon on a Sunday at 1030 a.m. every week at 7155 Hickory Ridge Road. We hope you guys have a great week. And remember, at Multiply, we the fam. We the fam. (laughs)